Welcome to Electro Online. Our next example is quite interesting. We have a jar that's filled with water, which, which is rotating about the vertical axis with an angular velocity of 45 revolutions per minute, which is 1.5 pi radians per second. Inside the jar, which is filled with water, we have a ping pong ball, which is attached to an 11 centimeter long string, and the string is attached at the very end of the jar. Now the mass of the ping pong ball is 2 grams and the volume is 24 cubic centimeters. We need to come up with an equation where the only variable left is theta. Now we know that the ping pong ball is going to be experiencing, well, it's going to be experiencing a buoyancy force, but not just in the vertical direction, also in the horizontal direction because of the centripetal motion. So let's draw the two buoyancy forces. So we have the buoyancy force in the vertical direction, let's call it BF in the vertical direction, and we have a buoyancy force in the horizontal direction, let's call it BFH. Now, the buoyancy force in the horizontal direction is due to the centripetal motion, which causes there to be more pressure at this, at this side of the jar than on this side of the jar, which will force the ping pong ball in this direction, and of course the, buoy the normal buoyancy force of a ping pong ball in water will push it upward as well. We should also realize that there's a small amount of weight that pushes down mg, which is going to be relatively small. Let's see how much that would be. So the, um, the weight of the ping pong ball mg would be equal to the mass, which is 0 0.002 kilograms times g, which is 9.8, which of course is going to be 0 0.0196 and that would be equal to Newton. So that would be the weight of the ping pong ball. We'll first ignore that weight and then afterwards we'll include it to see how much of a difference that makes. So let's see here. Let's calculate the buoyancy force in the vertical direction. So the buoyancy force in the vertical direction is going to be equal to the weight of the displaced liquid, which is going to be the mg of the displaced liquid, which is going to be the density times volume times g of the liquid, Remember that the mass is equal to the, or I should say the density, is equal to the mass over the volume, which means that the mass is equal to the density times the volume, and that's what we put over here. Now we plug in the numbers. The density of the displaced liquid is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. The volume is going to be 24 cubic centimeters, but we have to divide that by 10 to the sixth to convert that to cubic meters and then g would be 9.8. So let's see what the buoyancy force is on that ping pong ball in the vertical direction. So it's, uh, let's see here, that's 24 divided by 1,000 times 9.8 equals, that's 0 0.2352 newtons. So that's the buoyancy force in the vertical direction. What about the buoyancy force in the horizontal direction? Well, that's going to be looking the same way. The buoyancy force in the, oop, not vertical, but horizontal direction is going to be equal to rho VA, centripetal. It's going to be caused by the centripetal acceleration. But what is the centripetal acceleration in this case? Well, we know that A centripetal is going to be equal to V squared over R, and V is going to be omega times r, so it's omega squared r squared over r, which means that centripetal force is going to be equal to omega squared times r. And so we can plug that in here, so it's going to be equal to the density times the volume times omega squared times r. So let's go ahead and plug in the numbers here to see what we get. That would be a thousand, that's the same. Volume would be 24 divided by 10 to the sixth. Omega squared, well that would be 1.5 squared, 1.5 pi squared, and then of course times r. r is going to be distance from there to there, which is 60 centimeters minus this distance, which is 11 centimeters times the cosine of theta. That's where the angle theta comes from. So let's plug in the numbers and plug in what we can find for r. So we have 1,000, we have 24 divided by 1,000, times 1.5 squared and times pi squared equals. And so that gives us the buoyancy force in the horizontal direction 
to be equal to 0 0.5330 times R. Now R is going to be 0 0.6 minus 0 0.11 times the cosine of theta. That's where we're introducing the angle theta. Now we're ready to come up with an angle because here we can say that the tangent of the angle theta is going to be equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side which in this case is going to be the buoyancy force in the vertical direction divided by the buoyancy force in the horizontal direction. So we have the buoyancy force in the vertical direction, we have the buoyancy force in the horizontal direction, and we're going to first ignore the mass of the ping pong ball, so we're going to ignore the mg. All right, so let's plug that in here into an equation to see what we end up with. So we have the tangent of theta, which is equal to the buoyancy force in the vertical direction, which is 0 0.2352, divided by the buoyancy force in the horizontal direction, which is going to be 0 0.5330 times 0 0.6 minus 0 0.11 times the cosine of theta. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to divide this by this and we're going to cross multiply this here. So now we end up with the tangent of theta multiplied times 0 0.6 minus 0 0.11 times the cosine of theta and that's going to be equal to uh, point 0.2352 divided by 0.533 equals, which is 0 0.441. 4413, if I want to keep one extra significant figure, although that's not really significant, is it? Okay, now next what we're going to do is we're going to multiply everything through here. So we have 0 0.6 times the tangent of theta, and when we multiply the tangent times the cosine, we end up with the sine, minus 0 0.11 times the sine of theta equals 0 0.4413. And then to simplify things just a little bit, let's divide everything by 0.11. So uh, divide that by 0.11, we end up with, this is equal to 4.01. Here we end up with minus the sine of theta, and here, when we divide this by 0.11, so 0.6 divided by 0.11 equals, we end up with 5.45 times the tangent of theta. And here we have a nice equation where the only variable left is theta, simplified as much as we can. Now what would happen if we add the weight of the ping pong ball? Well, that would reduce the buoyancy force in the vertical direction. So if we're going to adjust that, let's see what would happen. So if we now get a new buoyancy force in the vertical direction, that's this quantity right here, that would mean is we would have to subtract the weight of the ping pong ball. So minus 0 0.0196. That gives us a new numerator, which is this value would change. So what would happen then is we end up with 5.45 times the tangent of theta minus the sine of theta is equal to, now instead of dividing 0.2352 by this, we have to subtract this first. So 0.2352 minus 0.0196, and now we divide that by 0.533, and we have, well, let me try it again, 2352 minus 0.0196 equals, and now divide that by 0 0.5333, oop, 0 0.5333 equals, and we end up with a slightly different number. We end up with equals to 4. Point, I forgot one more thing. I have to divide by 0 0.11. Divide by 0 0.11 equals, there we go equal to 3.68. And so notice that we get a slightly different equation 
which this includes the weight of the ping pong ball. And so that's the equation we we're looking for. Well, you could probably come up with any form, any, a number of different forms of equation, but that's a good one and we'll stick with this. That's the equation we're looking for with the angle theta.